Hey, what's up guys? It's Rob. Hope you're doing really good out there. So the good news is it looks like things are finally starting to open up again here in the UK anyway, and we can start maybe playing some gigs again. I haven't played a gig. Well, actually, this is a little bit of a lie. I'll explain in a minute, but I haven't played a gig in a year and a half until recently. The other week I played my very, very first gig since New Year's Eve 2019 into 2020. That was my, my last gig playing the guitar on New Year's Eve 2019 thinking, oh, I've got a great year ahead of playing more gigs and I was looking forward to it. Little did I know, all of them would be canceled and you know, a year and a half later would be the next time that I play a show. So recently I played a gig with my band, the very, very first one. I play in a function band, a session band. We play a lot of weddings and parties and things like that. And this one was a birthday party and it was really just such a good experience. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos or pictures of it because it was a private event. So I'm just gonna talk about it. So hopefully this isn't just something that's happening in the UK as well. And hopefully this is something that is happening worldwide. I mean, I don't know about other countries whether gigs even stopped in your countries or anything like that, but they definitely stopped here. But if they did stop in your country, then hopefully things are gonna start opening up again. and We can actually get back to doing what we love, which is playing live for people. After playing the gig, a few things really stuck in my mind, which you don't even really think about too much. Maybe some of them are obvious, but we'll get to those in a minute. But there's a lot of other things which just completely slipped my mind, which, you know, just come with gigging and things like that. So I thought I would make a video for anybody out there who is in a band or going to be in a band or going to be playing any shows or anything like that. Of just things to generally think about and consider before you go and play live, because it was a little bit of a shock to me, even though it's something that I do a lot, it's my job. So it was really nice to get back to doing my job. There was still a couple things which I needed to re-familiarize myself with. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Hopefully it's gonna help some of you guys out. So before we get into that, don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. So the first thing really is obviously before you're gonna go and play live again, take care of your instruments and your equipment. You gotta make sure you've got everything covered, you've got all your guitars and amps and pedals and everything is in working order. This is extremely obvious and this is why I'm getting this out of the way early, but it's something to think about and maybe there are people out there who wouldn't really think this through. They'd just grab the nearest guitar and their amp and just head to a gig without really testing everything. So make sure you've tested all your equipment, especially like mine, if it's just been sat there not doing anything for that long. You wanna make sure everything's in working order. Get new strings for your guitar. I can't really stress that enough. Again, it seems really obvious, but I just feel like not only for the tone and you know the, the whole playing experience, I just feel like I play better when I've got brand new, fresh strings on my guitar. I just feel like it gives me a little bit of an extra enjoyment because new strings feel really nice to play. And if you're enjoying it more, in my experience, you play better. I definitely feel like I play better when I'm playing a guitar with really nice strings as opposed to a guitar with strings that have been on it for ages and they're a little bit dirty. Not nice. So yeah, change the strings on your guitar, make sure everything's working, test everything out. You know, if there's any cables or anything like that you need to replace, then definitely go and replace those ASAP. You don't want to be getting to the gig and finding out all this stuff is, is like knackered. So equipment, number one, that's out of the way now. The main thing that I noticed, there's two main things, two main parts of this, which is obviously I haven't been playing shows and therefore I've, I've still been playing a lot of guitar because I teach guitar so I've been doing a lot of lessons both online some in person during like lockdown periods when they kind of ended for a little part and, and I'm back to doing that now finally we're able to teach in person but the thing that I really noticed is that I haven't played guitar stood up for a year and a half which is a really different experience if you're not used to playing guitar stood up I've been sat down for a year and a half playing guitar and when I'm playing live on stage I'm gonna be stood up the entire time and it's just a completely different ball game. It's a different animal trying to play the guitar when you're used to sort of being sat down with it and in that sort of position and suddenly you're stood up and the guitar is just sits differently against your body. So that was a little bit of an adjustment and a little bit of a shock because it, you know, I can play the guitar stood up, but you know, suddenly my brain was like, wow, oh yeah, this feels a little bit different. I need to get used to this. So if you're about to play a gig don't just rock up at the gig and grab your guitar and play. Actually spend some time practicing stood up, you know, especially if you need to run through the songs. Again, we'll go through that later, that's another point. But if you've got to run through things, run through things stood up because it will really help you out because you're not really going to be playing the gig sat down. Hopefully not anyway. So yeah, the first thing is playing guitar stood up felt really strange and definitely was a little bit of an adjustment. Which leads me on to my next point. I completely forgot how physical playing a gig is. It's not just the actual playing part when you're on stage. 
It's everything from when you get there and you're loading in the equipment, then you've got to set everything up and then sound check, and then you've got to do this, then that. And then you're playing before you know it, and then there's other things going on. And then by the time you finish playing, now you've got to pack everything down, back in the car again, whatever it is. Like, it's a busy day. And if you're not prepared for that, like, you know, I guess you kind of get used to it when you're in a rhythm of gigging frequently, like I was. But after a year and a half, I was aching the next day, my legs. The thing is, I realized, thinking about it now, throughout that entire gig that I played recently, I don't think I sat down once in 10 hours. When I got out of the car at the gig, load all my stuff in, set it up, sound check, play the gig, you know, talk to people, mingle this, that, and the other, and then, you know, pack down at the end, back in the car. So getting out of the car and then getting back into the, in the car again at the end, I, I didn't sit down in between that time. My legs were killing me the day after. I felt like I'd just done six leg days at the gym. But, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty interesting experience. So yeah, just something to think about, you know, be prepared, <laughs> as daft as it sounds. Take a stool if you really need to, you know, the, or a chair or something to sit down. If you're gonna be on your feet quite a lot, you never know, it sounds really daft to say, but you know, rest is important as well. Um, so other than that, just prepare your mind anyway, that you're probably gonna be on your feet quite a lot and it's gonna be quite a physical day, especially lifting things. This is gonna sound really daft as well. I know I keep saying that about literally everything, but you know, be careful lifting things if you've not lifted heavy things for a year and a half. You're gonna hurt your back. I've definitely hurt my back loads of time lifting heavy amps and speakers and things when I've not really kind of warmed up for the day or anything like that. I remember on my birthday a couple years ago, I bent down to pick up a PA speaker and it wasn't the fact that the PA speaker was heavy, I just bent down awkwardly, quickly, and my back hadn't really adjusted to that position yet. And I pulled my back and it was agony. And it was on my birthday as well when I turned 30. So I had a great birthday. I still had to go and play the gig. I couldn't really move. I just kind of had to stand there really awkwardly playing the guitar in absolute agony on painkillers. Not a good experience. So just be aware, it's a very physical day. So that's point two, three, whatever it is. My next point basically just goes off things that are happening in the world and what is allowed and what isn't. It's quite hard to know at the moment how many people can even be at a gig if gigs are even allowed to happen. Are they only allowed to be outside if they're playing? Can they be inside as well? It's, it's so bizarre because no one really has a clue what's going on. But I'm going to imagine at the moment that most gigs, at least for the foreseeable future, might be outdoors. The gig that I just played was an outdoor gig. It was, like I said, it was somebody's birthday party. It was actually at their house. They had a really, really big house, really big garden. So it was absolutely no effort or no disturbance or anything for us to play it as a full band with a PA and everything like that. But it was an outdoor gig. And that is something to consider, especially if you live in England, like me, um, because we were told that this is gonna be an outdoor gig. Well, actually, no, we were told it was gonna be in a marquee, like a big sort of tent thing. You know, I've played in countless marquees before where there's usually a stage, there's loads of tables and chairs inside. Everyone's over this one big shelter. That's a marquee. When we turned up, it wasn't a marquee. It was a gazebo, which is basically just a shelter shielding us from any potential rain. Luckily, it didn't rain that night, but it was bloody freezing. It was really cold, probably the coldest gig I've ever played. So I had no idea that that was going to be a thing, and I, I really hadn't prepared for that. So I'm playing the guitar, stood up, which is awkward because I'm not used to it. My legs are already hurting. I know I'm sounding like I'm complaining, but I'm just kind of exaggerating a little bit. But at the same time, I was freezing. My hands were really struggling to play just because we were, it was windy. It wasn't raining, but it was windy and it was cold. So if you are going to be playing a show, if you know it's going to be an outdoor one and you live in England, maybe it's fine if you live in other countries where it's a little bit warmer and stuff, but yeah, England, not good for it. Just wrap up warm if you can. Obviously like permitting, depending what event you're playing. Uh, luckily it was a birthday party, it wasn't a wedding, so it didn't necessarily matter too much how posh I looked, whether I had a shirt on and you know, I was all smart and stuff like that. I mean, I did look smart, but at the same time, I, I had a very thin hoodie, which I was happy to have, but, and I had to wear that whilst I was playing, but other than that, I had nothing, so I was just freezing the whole night. Um, and a little bit of, just an ironic thing, which was quite funny, is that the table next to me where I was playing, there was a load of people sat there, and the table had like a fire pit in the middle of it, and everyone was just sat there warming their hands the entire time, whilst I'm stood there 
freezing trying to play the guitar looking like I just want to put my face in that fire right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was my point. Just make sure that if you're playing an outdoor gig, you dressed appropriately and that you're not going to be too cold. It goes without saying, it's one of those things, but it might affect the way that you play. It might affect the gig. So something to think about. You've now got to realize as well that we basically lost a year of our lives. Uh, it just feels like we've skipped an entire year, which is pretty mad when you think about it. But within that year, music is still released. New songs have come out. Not only that, one thing that happens quite a lot at the moment with things like TikTok and all these, these apps is that old songs come back in fashion when they get picked up and they go viral on a TikTok or something like that. I mean, I think it happened last year with some Fleetwood Mac songs. Some people started using them in TikToks and the next thing Fleetwood Mac are back in the charts with a song that came out 30 years ago or something like that. And then there's all the new songs as well. And when we got back into gigging again, we really had to rethink our set list and thinking, wow, like we've skipped over an entire year. We haven't played anything. Normally we, we would gradually add things in the set we play covers by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that, so that's why I'm talking about this, but we would add songs in the set if they came out and they were popular, 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 popular at the time. But when it's been a year, you've got to kind of think about the entire past year all in one go. Like what, what songs do we need to take from that year and add into our set? What songs do we need to get rid of? What songs are kind of old and boring now? So yeah, rethink your set list a little bit if you're in a covers band like me, depending on what sort of event you're playing. Uh, like we play a lot of modern and older stuff so we got a nice mix of everything so we really have to think about that and think about our audiences and things like that so yeah just something to think about there like I said we, we it was a birthday party it was a 50th birthday party so we need to think of a set list which is appropriate for an audience that are going to be around that sort of age group there's no point playing a lot of really modern pop stuff that 50 year olds might not like or if there was a younger crowd there but then we're not going to play all the Beatles stuff. It's just not going to work. So it means just think about your set list and be able to vary it and adjust it if possible. I think that's basically it. Those are the main takeaways from the gig that I played the other week. I had so much fun, despite it being cold, despite my legs hurting and it being quite tiring and things like that. I didn't have any, any hiccups with any equipment or anything like that. I tested everything before I went. I had a couple rehearsals as well. Actually, that's one more thing that I want to mention very quickly is it's a no-brainer, but make sure you rehearse, make sure you practice before the show. We play the same set lists pretty much week in, week out, or we did do when we were gigging frequently. And after not playing the songs for about a year and a half, I was thinking, am I gonna remember how to play these songs? Because I haven't practiced them. I've just, the last time I played them, that New Year's Eve gig in 2019, until when I played them recently, that, that was it. I haven't practiced them in between then. So I was thinking, you know, a little bit panicky and, you know, rehearsals, are a no-brainer, go and have some rehearsals. But the one thing I will say about that is it's weird how much you panic about maybe the, some of the tougher songs in the set. If there's any trickier guitar parts in songs and you think, am I gonna remember how to play that tricky guitar part? From my experience, it's the trickier stuff you remember better because the trickier stuff you had to put more effort in in the first place to learn and practice. So therefore you've got that more dialed in, in your mind and in your hand. You remember putting the effort in to actually learn it and practice it and get better at it. The other stuff, the very easy songs, they're the ones that skip your mind because you didn't really have to put any effort into learning them. It might just be three chords or something. It just, just something like that. And because you didn't really put the effort in, it didn't really sink in properly. And you will have to go through those again. At least just remind yourself what chords you need, what key it is or something like that and yeah so don't think that you have to really brush up on just the, the trickier stuff brush up on some of the easier stuff as well if not even put more focus on that when we had our rehearsals it was actually quite amusing what things i messed up on for the most part everything was all right muscle memory was there i remembered how to play the songs i remembered the structures everything was just right back almost as if there'd been no time in between at all which was really cool our drummer hadn't drummed in a year and a half, he hadn't even sat at a drum kit. Our singer hadn't sang, so he was worried about his voice, but everything was just, it sounded great, and we all had a great time getting back together and playing, but there was a few hiccups here and there, which were just comical, if anything. So I'm glad we kind of ironed out those creases in a rehearsal rather than turning up and playing, but the things I messed up on and the things that kind of slipped my mind were, weren't even tricky. They were the simple things that just evaded my memory temporarily. So yeah, it was important to go through those. Anyway, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Hope it's been enjoyable. Hope it's been useful for anybody who might be doing some shows or anything like that. 
or even if you're not and you're just genuinely curious about what it's like to get back to gigging after so long for somebody who does it frequently. So yeah, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel and you've stumbled across this video, like I said earlier, please subscribe to my channel. That would really help me out. Give this video a like. Also, let me know what you think in the comments. Leave me a comment if you're playing a show, if you've just played a show. How was your experience? What are you worried about? Or what are you looking forward to? Literally anything. Let's just have a conversation. So leave me a comment. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. Like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video.